How are you? I hope that you are all okay. And uh, siguro just to uh, go back sa previous topic natin, no? last week we had Sir Sam and Ma'am Myla, um, where Sir Sam talked about uh, how MSU is uh, a peace university, and then uh, Ma'am Myla naman talked about discovering inner peace and uh, culture of peace. So on that line of thought, actually, on the group chat, just so we're making sure now we are harvesting the things that you learned from last week. Can you uh, quickly chat kung ano yung mga remember nyo or your takeaways from last week? Ayan, so chat away dyan sa chat group natin. Ang first na mag-chat merong shout out. <laughs> So again, si Sir Sam last week talked about how MSU is the first university and then Ma'am Myla talked about inner peace. So just, we're making sure na ma-harvest natin for today uh, yung inyong learnings from last week because connected din naman yung mga topics natin. So on the group chat, can you write kung ano yung mga major takeaways nyo? Ayan, no? Hello? Nawala ka dyan. Ay, hello, hello, can you hear me? Back no? na, okay. Narinig yung instructions ko kanina. <laughs> wala. Na wala. <laughs> no, I was saying, sir, na parang I was saying, I was explaining kung ano yung topic last week. I'm just making sure na ma-harvest yung learning from last week because uh, it's also connected to our topic for today. So I, my instruction was on the group chat, I chat your major takeaway or yung mga things na nag-stood out from, uh, for you last, uh, for last week's session. So get thumbs up if you got the instruction. Thank you, John. And if you heard me, thank you, sir. And kung naririnig ako, <laughs> feel free to message me or sabihin dito akong hindi narinig. Ayan, thumbs up. So, ayun, narinig ako. So, feel free to chat on the chat group kung ano yung mga takeaways nyo o yung mga nag-stood out uh, from last session. Hello. Hi, Ma'am Jo. Ayan, medyo hindi kita marinig. But hello, hello. Andito na din yung ating speakers for today. Ang ating panelist. Hello. Ayan. Ayan na, nakikita ko na yung mga nag-chat. Thank you from... MSU IIT, Miss Amabel and Bornas. Peace starts from ourselves, right? Um, inner peace. And then from Miss Renabel Abadi source, importance of inner peace and how we will possibly teach inner peace to students like the activities and the strategies. And then from Patry Dagapioso, everyone comes from different backgrounds or contexts. Thus, understanding these varied diversities is a key to fermenting peace and resolving conflict. Great, great insights, no? And great takeaways also. So, you can keep chatting uh, later habang uh, nagkukontinue yung uh, ating session. Um, but thank you for sharing your major takeaways uh, from last week. And today... Um, makikita nyo na parang related din naman. Of course, yung mga topics natin are chosen in a way na hindi siya isolated from one another. And with that thought, I would like to call on um, our colleague, Sergio Warpantaw, siguro to give us a um, an overview kung uh, what, what, what is our topic for today and paano siya, uh, paano siya connected also, I guess, to other to other ng mga topics natin in the past and the future. Sir Jovar, hello, good morning. Buti nakapasok ka kahit brownout sa Gensign. Yeah, yeah. 
Magandang araw po sa kanilang lahat. Kalinaw, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So today, this is going to be an exciting morning because we're going to hear different experiences from different campus as to how they teach uh, fundamentals of peace education using the modules that um, was developed uh, two to, uh, that was three years ago. That was a, a quick development of the module, but I think um, based on the experiences of the teachers in FPE 101, we're reaping the outcomes that uh, we were uh, aiming to achieve during its development. But just to have a quick overview of what this module that I am talking about, uh, this is actually the module on Fundamentals of Peace Education 101 developed by the MSU system or Mindanao State University system for the FPE 1 class. 101 classes. So there are actually five modules in the in this subject. So one is the peace and peace education. So uh, in this module, you're, you're going to have or you're going to provide an overview of what peace is all about, what culture of peace is, how do we discover inner peace, and of course, uh, the peace education that we are doing, we are going to orient our students about about the overview of uh, peace education that we are offering in the university. Uh, that, um, the next one is module two. This is about the peace concepts in Islam and other faiths and spiritual traditions. So here we're going to discuss um, the similarities of the teachings of religions about peace, about promoting peace, and uh, that in this module, we are to promote ecumenism. And then uh, module three is about understanding conflict and violence. Here we define what conflict is, we define violences, we discuss about the levels, and of course, the ABCs of conflict. Uh, I think the those who have uh, trainings on uh, pe culture of peace are very familiar with this concept, and that when we talk about peace uh, education, we have to acknowledge that conflict is there, that conflict is natural, that conflict is embedded in all types of relationships. So this is the module where students can understand that um, there is something that we can get from conflict and what we need to, to um, move away or to distant away is the violence that that conflict can resolve too. And then the module four is about resolving conflict uh, basically, we are emphasizing and stressing about um, peaceful approaches to resolving conflict and the role of communication here is very important. That's why there's a module, um, there's a module here that is talking about um, effective communication, dialogue, uh, and of course, uh, we have other, uh, other uh, peaceful approaches to resolving conflict. And then uh, the module five is actually about conflict transformation and transcendence. And um, this uh, is talking about healing and reconciliation, um, well, acknowledgement of, of, of the experiences of the past and the, the pains uh, these experiences brought so that um, there will be reconciliation. But of course, uh, this module is also... Um, um, encouraging uh, our students to, to, to do something, to act, because uh, the, the very uh, goal of uh, peace education or teaching fundamentals of peace education for our students to uh, become uh, peace champions. Uh, they will become peace advocates. And in this module, we encourage them to think about something which they can do to transform their communities into uh, uh, peace um, into peaceful and developed communities. So just uh, a quick uh, view of what are the learning contents of each module. So uh, next slide. So we have the module one. Ayan. So that's module one. So as what I mentioned, this is about peace education, the definitions and concepts, the components of peace, and of course, the culture of peace. And if you notice, the module one was actually our... Um, agenda during the last webinar. So let's move on to the next uh, slide. The module two, oh, this is going to be, uh, this is something that is, uh, I think, uh, a little bit heavy because for many 
fundamentals of peace educate education teachers uh, let let's uh, get to know their sharings about how they taught this one because I think this is a recurring challenge of or that uh, one of the recurring challenges of teaching FPE is how to balance the 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 delivery of uh, this module two. All right, now let's proceed. Module three is about understanding conflict and violence. So of course, as what I mentioned. We differentiate here conflict versus violence. Uh, we talk about the concept of conflict and, of course, the causes because in peace, in, in, in building culture of peace, we have to be uh, looking at the causes of conflict. And then uh, there are different tools that we can probably use. So that's a conflict tree analysis. And there's an integration also of, of the historical uh, journey of uh, peace and conflict in in Mindanao, because uh, I think that's a context that we would like to stress on so that uh, uh, our students will be able to um, think about those problems and do something about the problem so that they can contribute to transforming our communities. And there is a special topic here on violent extremism. This, uh, this is sensitive, but I think uh, one of the reasons why we have this FPE 101 is also a response to the emergence of violent extremism in 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 our uh, in 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 our beloved Mindanao. Although there are some who do not acknowledge the the presence of violent extremism because they say that the origin of this is not is not from Mindanao, but it's foreign by nature. So, sige, let's uh, try to uh, listen later. How did our FPE teachers talk about this? Then module four is about resolving conflict. So as what I mentioned, we talk about uh, conventional methods of resolving conflict, these full approaches, and we touch on indigenous methods of resolving conflict. And finally, our module five, the last module is about conflict transformation as a concept and healing and reconciliation, as well as humility and closure. So these are the things, or these are the learning content. Uh, you will get notebooks because I think there's a lot of experiences we can get from our invited uh, speakers or a panel or our discussants. So shall we move on to introducing our discussants this uh, morning? John? Yes, thank you so much. Are we so ready much. to listen to their experiences? Yes, we're so happy and so excited also to discuss the experiences of our friends from the different campuses in MSU. So let's start with our first one, uh, with our first panel uh, member. Uh, so our first panel member is a faculty member of the English Department, College of Social Sciences and Humanities, Mindanao State University, Marawi City. She is also the coordinator of the PhD Language Studies Program of the CSSH Graduate Studies Department. Presently, she's designated as the head of the MLP under the Maranao Cultural Heritage Center of MSU Marawi City. Her research interests include preservation and promotion of the Maranao language culture and culture, peace education, English language teaching, and social linguistics. So everyone, let's give a warm welcome to Dr. Juhari D. Alanka Aziz. So hi, ma'am. Good morning. Hello, John. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you so much, uh, Sir John, for that kind introduction. Uh, good morning. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Uh, Mapiya kapipitar ka nulangon, maayong buntag, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. I'm very happy to see familiar faces, my friends, my fellow peace educators from Mindanao State University System. Uh, it's my pleasure to be invited as one of the panel members in today's webinar. Uh, to share about uh, very personal experiences, teaching fundamentals of peace education, approaches, and uh, pedagogies. Thank you, U.S. Embassy in the Philippines, Attorney Neil Pakamalan, Dr. Beng Manla, and your team 
for continuously supporting a peaceable Mindanao through partnering with our very own Mindanao State University system. Please know that you have played a great role in making our journey as peace educators and MSU more meaningful and productive. So for today, as requested, I am to share my teaching approaches, pedagogies, and of course, uh, specific strategies uh, in teaching peace or fundamentals of peace education. By the way, I'm showing you my slides. Uh, it's a mural painting that can be found in our center, Mernau Cultural Heritage Center, uh, which showcases the majestic uh, view uh, of our Sarimanok, our Lake Lanao, and our the everlasting uh, sleeping beauty. Let me begin by recalling my experiences and affirming what uh, Dr. Anonas, Dr. Mayong, Dr. Juvar, and my fellow peace educators from the MHU system who were with us in our series of webinars that when the FPE 101 course began to be offered in MSU system in 2018, after the Marawi siege, we teachers of such course were quite ambivalent because unlike other courses that we've been teaching in which we've studied them from our bachelor's degree to MA, then to PhD, peace education is new. It is special, its focus is different. So this made it, fascinating and at the same time challenging. How will I teach this course? I am a language teacher. What approaches, methods, strategies will I use? How can I address and cope with the various challenges that come my way? Will I be able to hide all those challenges? How about during this time of pandemic? How will I do it more effectively and meaningfully? These are the some of the questions I have been asking personally to myself. Alhamdulillah, basically because I am a member of the committee that crafted this three unit undergraduate course on peace education called FPE 101 and also one of the FPE 101 module writers. I together with my fellow committee members as what Dr. Anona shared during his talk last week have undergone series of trainings. The most significant ones are the five-day training from Center of Peace and Conflict Studies of Cambodia, shown in our in the slide. Uh, and of course, the five-day training from the composite team of peace education, experts from the University of the Philippines, Xavier University, and Miriam College, sponsored by the US Embassy. That's our first uh, partnership uh, and managed by Mambeng Manla. Uh, through the U.S. Embassy, we were able to come up with a module that Sir Jovar has just presented us. And we did, of course, training of trainers uh, from the other MSU campuses. So I was actually one of the trainers to train 30 teachers coming from MSU Naawan, MSU Buog, MSU Maigo, MSU Sulu, MSU Tawi-Tawi, MSU Ellencat, and MSU SND. There I met my fellow peace advocates, uh, Ma'am Lovely and Sir Bong Bong, and of course, others. So in my six semesters of teaching FPE 101, what approaches, methods, strategies do I consider effective? Uh, actually, as shown on the slide here, uh, it is already uh, written in our syllabus prepared by the committee that this is a three unique basic and comprehensive course. And it's a peace in action. It's action-based discipline for which a holistic, multi, enter and transdisciplinary approach is adapted. So we are already guided as to the approaches that we are going to uh, use in teaching this three unit course. This intends to produce students who are peace loving change accelerators or agents of positive change, positive advocates and champions to establish or build a culture of peace. And there is also there, there are also the course outcomes 
the goals of this um, fundamentals of peace education. And uh, our previous speakers, okay, much has been uh, shared about this approaches and pedagogies. Our previous speakers uh, have emphasized that in teaching peace education, the how is as important as the what. Hence, teacher learning approaches that are compatible with the goals of our peace education offered in the Mindanao State University are the following. So this has been discussed by our previous uh, lecturers. We have part, uh, participatory, we have cooperative learning, Okay, in the participatory, we allow students to inquire, share, collaborate, and also engage in dialogue with teacher and with their classmates. And then cooperative learning gives opportunities for students to work together, learn rather than compete with each other. And then we have the experiential. Uh, this allows also students to build ideas to form their own concepts from experience or activity they went through. And we also have this holistic, which promotes cognitive, affective, behavioral goals of learning. So among the various teaching learning strategies that are well suited with these approaches to peace education, which are most effective to my students throughout the semesters. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I have been given, uh, given a chance to teach this uh, uh, course since uh, the beginning of its offering that uh, was uh, 2018, first semester of 2018. So now I am sharing you the, the effective, okay, effective uh, strategies that are uh, that I find okay uh, suitable to my uh, students okay uh, since uh, my uh, goal is always to involve engage and empower my students uh, I actually listed four strategies here okay and I'm sure my fellow uh, uh, peace educators there out there can relate to this one. So the first one is role playing. This strategy is used to provide the participants with the opportunity to, to feel, to feel the situation rather than uh, merely intellectualize about it. So it develops empathy and greater understanding for other vent, uh, vantage points can cultivate both cognitive and affective learning. My students really, enjoyed role playing okay this was before the pandemic okay so there are a lot of uh, strategies that we use in this role playing okay it's either i gi uh, give them uh, a, a scenario or uh, my students will be the one to uh, make okay a script for a particular issue so uh, for uh, uh, this has been very effective Okay, uh, and uh, it's a, a crucial part though, because not all students uh, are uh, good uh, actresses, actors, but really they enjoy this uh, activity. Okay, and then the second one is of course, the journal writing. So this has always been part of my uh, strategy. Uh, because this helps the students think, reflect, express, and write the responses, reflections, reactions to an issue that has been discussed. So uh, there are students that really uh, that can really express themselves through writing. Uh, by the way, in the journal writing in FPE 101, since I uh, conducted, okay, I conducted a... Um, survey study on the language preference of my students 
in teaching on error in learning FPE 101, I have found out that they are uh, more comfortable using Filipino language and uh, English. So in the journal writing, I always tell my students, okay, you can use English or you can use Filipino because my class is very diverse. Uh, my students uh, are uh, coming from different uh, cold, uh, are, uh, cultures, culture, they have the different cultural backgrounds, they speak different languages, they have different beliefs. Okay, so that does not matter. Everybody is recognized, every belief, every language is recognized. But for our journal writing, I allow them to use English and Filipino. Okay, the same thing is true in the third strategy that is uh, very effective to my students. That's telling, sharing stories. That's why in our last uh, webinar, uh, I was very fascinated with the, the sharing of Ma Myla, especially when she mentioned about uh, telling stories. So this includes uh, personal stories. This helps students remember concepts, uh, share personal experiences related to an issue, uh, and then this helps also illustrate better the points made. And this has been very effective. Okay, to, uh, to my students. Yung circle time na ginagawa that was taught to us, that was done to us during the training, uh, that has become very effective to my uh, students. Okay. And then, of course, the collage making. Kasama talaga ito sa mga activities ko. A collage is a collection of photos from various sources that are put together to make a whole. So asking students to make a collage on issues that relate to peace will help them or helps them understand those issues better. So kasama na talaga ito sa mga activities ko, uh, especially when I let them uh, define peace Okay, during the start of our meeting, so I let them do collage and there are students that are very, that have been very creative in doing this activity and uh, aside from making this one, they're going to share it to the class and uh, it, it, we enjoy listening to everyone's story. And finally, okay, we do lecture series for module two. Yes, we organize this because we know that not everyone uh, can be able to uh, convey more effectively, efficiently topics on module two. So, nag organize po kami ng uh, uh, lecture series, okay, uh, that have been conducted in uh, 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 bigger areas, uh, halls. Okay, and then we invite uh, speakers uh, like uh, Professor Jihan Makarambon to talk about concept of peace in Islam. And then these are some of the pictures, uh, concept of peace in Christianity, concept of peace in other spiritual beliefs. And our students really enjoyed those uh, lecture series. So there are a lot of realizations, especially when they have um, the, the Christian, my Christian students have heard about uh, the concept of uh, uh, one concept in uh, one verse in the Holy Quran that says, in Islam, there's no compulsion of religion. Your religion is yours, mine is mine. So, and then they're also, uh, they have also found out that every religion promotes peace and that makes them very interesting and of course are relaxed and feel comfortable because uh, they're not afraid anymore or there, there were misconceptions before. Okay, so these are some of the pictures, okay, uh, of the activities that we've been doing before the pandemic. Okay, so how about the next question here is, how do I find teaching FPE 101 during public health emergency situation?
Hello? Hi, ma'am. Nawala yata yung slide mo, ma'am. Salamalaikum. Hello, ma'am. Let me salam. Hello po, ma'am Jo. Parang nawala ako. Oo nga. Pero ba- Are you still there? Na. Hello, am ma'am. I, yes, and... Am I here? <laughs> yes, ma'am. You are here. Uh, 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 opo, um, nawala lang yung slide nyo. But you can uh, uh, share again. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Nawala ako. Uh-uh. So, where am I? So, it just uh, shows us how crucial our role is as of this moment. Mm-mm. Yes, you, you were okay. about to... So, I was showing you a while ago about the works of my students, such as the collage, okay, Ayan, the role-playing, uh, the sharing of experiences, the journal writing that uh, transpired in the golf course. So imagine writing your experiences while sitting in the golf course, uh, feeling the f- uh, fresh air, and then looking at the lake land now and uh, the sleeping beauty. So ang ganda ng experiences ng mga students ko. Okay. So, uh, and then again, as what I was saying, the next question now is, how do I find teaching FPE, 1, FPE 101 during public health emergency situation like what's happening right now with the advent of the COVID pandemic? What are the bottlenecks in migrating from face-to-face to remote distance learning or online learning? How do I cope or how have I been coping with those challenges and what strategies do I use? So dalawang semesters na po ang nakalipas kasi katatapos lang ng semester, dalawang semesters nang nakalipas and we've been on online classes in FPE 101. Well, Sir Mayong and other peace educators have already expressed this. With the changes in the educational landscape happening nowadays because of the pandemic, more and more challenges have been experienced not only in teaching peace ed, uh, but also other courses. Uh, FPE 101 by its design has been meant to be interactive, engaging, empowering, but with no face-to-face interaction, it is quite difficult to achieve the goals we set for this course. So what have I done? for these two semesters. Okay, I forgot to share that uh, being a language teacher myself helps me become a peace educator. Okay, both before the pandemic and during the pandemic. Why? My mga language teacher dito, shout out to Sir Hamim, my colleague in the English department. Because peace education and language teaching share a number of common techniques dialogue, debate, and conversation, for example, are important ways to practice language and are also means of connecting the personal or individual to the cultural or multicultural. Written and verbal exchange of ideas give meaning to language and at the same time promote the understanding of differences. Active listening is part of the language of non-violence and is also a vital skill in acquisition of language. Alhamdulillah. Conversation, an integral way to develop language proficiency, connotes a community of inquirers who are mutually responsible for creating knowledge. Hence, peace education is also concerned with cooperative, interactive learning, a necessary prerequisite for good language learning. So before I gave you the strategies, activities that I do during this time of pandemic, I am sharing you my students' takeaways. Okay. Sabi ng sujanti ko, all throughout the sessions we had, I can say that this subject is one of my favorite subjects at, as it really helps me shape my personality and the way I enhance my reasoning. This course has employed me the real meaning of learning and that is to enjoy the whole process of it. So I was quite uh, shocked and at the same time happy after uh, reading this one because this 
despite uh, the, the the online classes that we we were doing, okay, despite some challenges, nasabi pa rin ito ng estudyante. Another student said, I love how our professor handles our FPE 101 class. It's so inspiring and life-changing. She's strict. Okay, na, nahalata nila na strict ako kahit sa online. Yet nice, creative, considerate, and understanding. I like her techniques. So ano kaya yung mga techniques ni ma'am? Every activity she gave is, us is meaningful and realistic. Our sharing of experiences made us nervous yet lighthearted and perceptive. Thanks to our teacher. Okay. So, and then sabi niya, I have so many experiences in this semester which makes it more memorable. I have so many things to be grateful for from important learnings I've learned and so and so. So, these are some of my students' takeaways. Okay. So, how I how have I been doing? So, ito siya. I use the same uh, format okay during the pandemic ayan yung mga strategies of course nawala na yung role playing because we can hardly do that so since we're using the new technologies instead of creating or making collage i let them do infographics but of course okay i gave them first a video uh, tutorial on making uh, or creating infographics. So infographics are graphics, uh, visual representations of information, data, or knowledge intended to present information quickly and clearly. So asking students to make infographics on issues that relate to this will help them understand those issues better. So if I'm not mistaken, uh, three, uh, four, uh, infographics were able to be created by my students and very effective. It does not stop with creating, they also share and uh, during our synchronous because we always have the synchronous and the asynchronous. Uh, actually, uh, ang meeting namin with my FPE 101 uh, is um, TTH uh, 10 to 1130. So, so Tuesday, that's our schedule for synchronous and then real-time teaching. And then for uh, Thursday, that's for asynchronous. So I just give them activities to be done uh, anytime. Okay. So this is one very effective to my students for the two semesters. Okay. Number two is writing key takeaways. Okay. Every synchronous uh, meeting before we end, okay, I am going to post, I have been posting uh, my key takeaways, okay, in the classwork, and then alam na yun na mga sujante. Okay, actually, this is not only for my FPE 101 class, it's for all the classes. Because uh, here, our students think, reflect, express, and write their insights, learnings, realizations on an issue that has been discussed. So parang my closure. Ano ba yung natutunan mo for that particular day? So hindi kayo mag, uh, you do not uh, depart without sharing. Okay. So perfect ko yan yung mga ko. I give 10 points or 20 points. And again, I let them write in English or in Filipino. Okay, that's their privilege. Uh, even if uh, my students in FPE 101 uh, class uh, is uh, or are um, English majors, walang problema. Their course is different from the major courses that I handle with them. Next is, of course, sharing of experiences and uh, attending webinars part na talaga ito ngayong new normal. So, alhamdulillah, the, the U.S. Embassy has been uh, sponsoring uh, seminars, I mean webinars, and then yung uh, lecture series din namin na nangyari for uh, Module 2 na turn into webinars. We invite again, okay, 
Professor Jihan Makarambon to discuss uh, concept of peace in Islam. And uh, what's good there is yung sa MSU system, FPE 101, M FPE 101 MSU system page, doon namin siya uh, in-upload and everybody can watch it as long as you you like our page okay that was created when uh this fpe 101 started to be offered so it's for everyone okay and uh, ang maganda din yung mga uh, because of this new technologies there are uh, uh programs na kinakandak ni na Sergio Bar at saka si Sir Mayong si Pakat Nudge yung kwan nila yung sa radio Kalinaw uh, ano ba yun? Uh, Kalinaw. So, uh, uh, I also advise my students to watch that one in their free, free time. So, yan. Those help students, my students, connect with others on more personal basis. Uh, and then they, they understand better some issues. And then doing interviews and research. Okay. Actually, madami activities, but these are the things that I find more effective to them. So, asking students to interview peace, a peace advocates, do research about a particular conflict uh, or peace-related issue would help them appreciate what others do to help community build a culture of peace. Sabi nga ni uh, Mom from the Miriam College, if you want to um, promote a culture of peace, you have to teach peace education. Okay, so uh, finally, these are the pictures, okay, photos, okay, mga screenshots sa mga uh, students' uh, work. So ayan yung final takeaways, okay, always na yan every end of the synchronous meeting. Uh, this is a video okay, uh, of my students. Conflict is not always negative, sabi niya, okay. And then infographic about resolving conflict. Ayan yung FPE 101 ambition system. It was live, okay, to uh, show, uh, what you call this? Showcase this um, a lecture on concept of peace in Christianity by Professor Ligit. And then ito yung kwanamen. Uh, uh, early part ng uh, GMIT namin, okay? And then simple strategies for conflict resolution. Of course, I always tell my students that when they make infographics, they have to document it or uh, write the sources. So with that, thank you so much. Sangibo salamat. I hope you've, uh, you've learned something. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Hey, sangibo, salamat to you also, Ma'am Jo. Thank you so much for sharing those specific strategies that you use during face-to-face -face and most importantly, ngayon na parang emergency situation, uh, pandemic time. I like how you highlighted yung mga uh, approaches and pedagogies that should be uh, participatory, experiential, holistic, and dapat syempre cooperative. Um, so with that, actually to our participants, I know meron kayo mga questions uh, or comments, please uh, jot down or write in on, on our group uh, chat group and then we'll get back to you later for the open forum. But for now, we'll proceed to the second panelist. Yes, John. And our second panelist is also an, uh, a language. I think is her field is on language also because um, her interest uh, involve research and extension um, mainly on the topics of social linguistics, eco linguistics, peace linguistics, and gender and language studies. He finished his her Bachelor of Arts in English in 2009 at Mindanao State University Iligan Institute of Technology and Masters Master of Arts in English Language Studies in the same university in the year 2019. She is currently the Peace Coordinator of Mindanao State University na Awan Campus. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give the virtual space to uh, Associate Professor Lovely A. Parungao. Ma'am Lovely? Hello, good morning. So I'll just uh, share my screen.
All right. Um, is it visible now? Yes, Paul. Okay. So before anything else, um, I'd like to say hi to all the peace educators out there. I miss you all. I miss our conversation. So for now, we're just doing it uh, virtually, but I am so happy that we are still trying. You know, um, um, I'd like to also take this opportunity to thank the Peace Committee with the help of the U.S. Embassy. If not for the FPE 101, the peace, uh, uh, what's this? The peace um, work in MSU Naawan will not be resurrected. So I really thank that there is this FPE 101 and we are here once again doing things to make our peace education better. So I'd like to share that in MSU Naawan, we are a toddler. I think we are all a toddler here in peace education. So let me share to you four, four pedagogical uh, approaches, which I believe are effective and surprisingly, um, surprisingly effective, or I should say, um, these are very important um, things that the students actually, you know, they love doing it. They, they uh, appreciate all these types of um, approaches. So to start with, there is some, um, we use, let me, okay. So the phenomenological approach. So phenomenology is actually about phenomena. So the appearances of or things as they appear in our experience. So basically in phenomenology, we use, we bank on the experiences of our students. Now, um, one of the things that I do in my peace class, at the very beginning, I always ask them, what is peace for you? What is um, peace? Anything that they can think of. You know, I, I always tell them that, do not let the internet um, influence you. Do not let any figure um, influence you. But I'd like you to think of what is really peace for you. So I give it to them as an assignment. And when they go back to the class, you'll be surprised that these students have very varied perceptions of peace. They can go as far as um, nature. Peace is being with nature is peace for them. Listening to music is peace for them. Love is peace. Unity is peace. And acceptance is peace. Freedom is peace. So all of this stuff. Uh, for us, probably, if you are a parent, you, do, you don't really see this as peace because if you are a parent, you, only, you want to provide and that is peace. You know, they are safe and that is peace. But these are youth that we are dealing with. And these experiences, we have to bank from them. I bank from them. And that is where I give them, that is where I design my um, lessons. So the phenomenal, uh, phenomenological approach allows us to understand the essence of students' perceptions in terms of peace, which suggests that educators could inspire the students to realize existential growth considering their peace construct. And the nice thing about phenomenological approach is that it avoids hierarchies, meaning we focus on non-essentialist, non-defining, and thus we show them that whatever their concept is of peace, that is welcome. But then again, the but comes in and we realize that, th that their perception of peace is limited and it is still very, um, self and society you know um so it's still very what one way peace so it is there but as educators we know where to get in we know where to discuss and what to discuss to them because we already have an idea of what is peace for them whether it is selfish peace or what but then that is their perception of peace so we have to accept that uh, it also devoids us from speaking or teaching from our own privilege, you know, from our own vantage point. So 
what I like is that it also reminds me that as a teacher, and dami ko pa palang hindi alam, no? So and dami ko parin palang dapat to explore. So that one phenomenological approach first focus on their experiences. Another thing which is very um, effective, I believe, is art in you in peace education. The use of art in peace education. So according to Winterstone, what art does is to coax away from the mechanical and toward the miraculous. The so-called uselessness of art is a clue to its transforming power. Art is not part of the machine. Art asks us to think differently, see differently, hear differently, and ultimately to act differently, which is why art has moral force. So I use this um, in my class, like I let my students draw or I let my students recite a poem. Why did they choose that poem, especially in interfaith like i let them uh for example from islam a uh, quote from islam a poem from islam or from christianity that and then let them explain why did they choose that um that poem also um i let them choose songs and sing them in class especially songs which are peace related so if you are familiar with uh, one day, you know, where is the love? So these are actually songs that they always choose. And we already know that these are actually songs that matter to them. So for me, art is a very important aspect in peace education. So you develop the social epistemic skills of the students. So included in this category may be capacities like good judgment, richer sensitivity to detail or following you, the delicacy of imagination. So the thing is when they are expressing themselves through art and explain their artwork to their classmates, their classmates will also have an idea of, ah, okay, so this is how my classmate feels. This is what he, his or her perception about a certain So this is what she has also learned. So things like that. And then third approach is that we use the national or international awareness campaigns in peace education. Uh, for example, the ASEAN integration or the ASEAN month, in my classroom, we celebrate it. So what I did in my classroom is that I grouped my students into 10, as there are 10 countries. And then I let them explore, like um, choose a song, like for example, Cambodian song, and then you present that in class, you wear, of course, their national costume, and then explain a bit about the Cambodian culture and explain a bit about the song or poem that you have presented. And I was so surprised that this is actually one of the things that students love do, uh, doing. Not only that they love it, but they also learn that, yeah, there is an ASEAN, you know, there is a, this is one thing that we do in order to maintain peace, to have equality or equity in the region. So we can actually use all these awareness campaigns. Uh, for example, um, the Pride March, you let them wear all those rainbow stuff, you know, and why there is a Pride March, you let them understand why there is a Pride March. So all of, um, you can just, we as teachers, we can just research about all these um, awareness campaigns. Um, very important is the Mindanao Week of Peace and then the International Day of Peace. So I uh, urge you to use all these awareness campaigns and celebrate it inside your classrooms. And the last thing is, which is also very difficult, whole school approach. Um, I am so glad that I am not only a peace educator, but I am also the IPDM coordinator. The thing is, I bank on the different organizations from our camp, like the Student Affairs or the Cultural and Development Office. So I can just easily talk to them like uh, during the Arts Month, um, back in 2020, February 2020, I asked them to please mainstream man the peace concept in your um, program. So instead of just uh, having their program Gambalay, they said that Gambalay para sa kapayapaan. So, these are actually very small steps, uh, baby steps, 
but some we are mainstreaming piece in our school. So um, the whole school approach it needs a lot of co collaboration from all the organizations in uh, in our school. So uh, another is, for example, our trainings. There were still students back then, before the pandemic, there were still students who do not have FPE 101. So we collected all their names, especially the student leaders, and we echo all the trainings that we have so that when they graduate, at least they will experience the peace, you know, the peace um, subject somehow in our school. So again, going back to the four approaches, Phenomenology, uh, phenomenology, use art, use the awareness, national or international awareness campaigns, and lastly, use the whole school approach in peace education. That would be all. Thank you. Lovely, lovely presentation and lovely. Thank you, Mom. Lovely so much for your presentation. Um, I we really appreciate this. No, the four that you mentioned, but no more. Um, you know, it's Um, tapos art awareness and then full of school approach. <laughs> Thank you That's so much. That's phenomenological. Phenomenological. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mom. Uh, ah, uh, So. Um, Ma'am, we did discuss the challenge for later. Ah, after, okay, great. Um, so let's proceed to our next uh, panelist. So our next panelist is the focal person of peace education. He is the coordinator of the Office of Cultural Affairs, also the coordinator of the Office of Information and Press and Publication, and the specialist uh, LNAC or LNAC, and the SSC Administrative Advisor. He is also a faculty member of the College of uh, Teacher Education, uh, MSU Lanao del Norte Agricultural College. And he is, of course, an FPE 101 instructor. So everyone, let's give a warm welcome and virtual applause to our last panel member, Mr. Bongbong Umpa Busran. So hi, sir. Sir, hindi ka namin marinig. Ako lang ba? Sir Jovar, narinig mo siya? Hindi ko siya naririnig. Uh, I, I think uh, he is still setting up. Ah, okay. Uh -uh. Sige, Sir Bong. Di pa din, Di pa Sir. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what I noticed, uh, Sir John, about the sharing of Ma'am Johara and yes. Ma'am Lovely where, uh, was that uh, they... Uh, they invested so much on the experiences of the students and they uh, brought the experiences of the students in, in the classroom in teaching the fundamentals of peace education. Sir Bong, are you ready? Hello. Ayan. Ayan. That's all we okay. now. Ah, okay. Sir, sir, go ahead. Po. Hello, good morning. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Isang mapayapang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Okay. So it's nice to see you all again virtually. Sana magkita kita tayo personally sa mga darating na panahon. Okay. So anyway, uh, I'd like to share, no? Isishare ko sa inyo itong aking, uh, how do I see this? Hindi ha nga, hanapin ko muna. Ala, ba't hindi ko mahanap? Okay. I'm having a problem now kasi malakas ng ulan dito sa isinding kanina at saka mahangin. <laughs> hmm. Oo nga. Paano ba ito isi-share? Sandali lang. Ayaw lumabas. Diyan sa may... Oh, ayan. Um, Na-open na yung file, sir? Minahanap ko yung file, actually. Ah, okay. Hindi pa siya na-open. Sige, sir. Hanapin niyo muna. Okay, okay. We can, ayun. Kanina we saw your screen. Oo nga, pero hindi ko magkita yung file ko. Nasaan na? Ayaw lumabas. 
Ano ba gagawin dito? <laughs> Para right. kayo ma- ayaw magpakita. <laughs> I'm having a problem now. Paano ba to? Um, na send ba yan sa amin before, sir? Pa, nasa kung... na send sa amin before sa team na namin na send o hindi ba? Hindi eh. Ah, okay. Um ano bang uh, pwedeng natin gawin? Ano yung file name mo, sir? <laughs> you naka- can Oo. Naka-PowerPoint siya, sir? Opo. So, uh-huh. open ka ng PowerPoint, kahit anong PowerPoint. Mm-hmm. Kahit walang laman, open mo lang. Tapos, go to... I think it 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 would show what are the recent file once yeah. you open. Okay. Oo. Uh-huh. Walang lumalabas. Ano ba ito? Ano siya? PowerPoint, PowerPoint. Nasaan ka? Ayaw magpakita. Naka-open Recent? ka na ng PowerPoint. Oo. Ayan na. Ayan na share screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see. <laughs> okay, lumabas na siya. Grabe. Ayaw, ayaw magpakita. Okay, anyway. Ayan. Again, good morning everyone. <laughs> Andiyan na nagpakita na siya. Okay. So anyway, um, simplihan natin. No? Uh, we'll start with the discussing. Ano ba itong teaching approach? So anyway, review lang naman ito. I believe everyone knows the definition of this. But uh, to refresh our mind. A teaching approach, according to what I have seen, no, uh, what I have researched, is a personal philosophy of teaching. Ibig sabihin, sa pagkakaintindi ko, uh, ating nakaisipan doon sa ating pagtituro. And uh, it is also a way, the way we teach or how we do it. So, so iba-ibang pamamaraan, no? para sa pagtuturo. And according to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, pedagogy, on the other hand, is often described as the act of teaching. So, most commonly understood as the approach to teaching. So, ito na. So, yun lang po. No, para ma-refresh lang tayo. Ano ba itong pinag-uusapan natin? Okay? And then, sabi nga nila, whether you have been teaching for two months or for 20 years, it can be difficult to know which teaching strategies will work best with your students. So, hindi siya garantiya na matagal ka na sa pagduturo ay yung strategy mo ay magiging effective din sa ibang teacher. So, sabi nga, as a teacher, there is no one-size-fits-all solution sa ating pagduturo. Possibly kasi that the strategy that is being used in MS Jensen would not be as effective if I'm going to use it dito sa MS Ralna. And we have because of a lot of factors. No, marami mga factors na uh, makakaapekto sa ating mga strategies. So let me mention two import, most important factors to consider doon sa ating mga teaching strat method, methodologies, or sa ating mga pedagogy. Number one ating consider is the learners. We have to consider the characteristic, the nature of our students, the demographic profile, no? yung religion ng mga bata, saan ba sila galing, maging ang kanilang uh, uh, geographical location ng kanilang tinitirahan, ay isa yung sa mga kinukonsider natin. And I think as a teacher, it is our responsibility or sabihin pong obligation natin no? na malaman ang background ng ating mga estudyante kasi doon naman talaga nakafocus pa paano natin i- uh, pagagandahin ang ating mga strategies in teaching. Alright, so pangalawa is the equipment and facilities. The availability of materials, yung mga devices, yung mga technologies that we need in uh, doing our uh, teaching approaches. So, like now, pinaka-importante meron sa pandemia, if ang mga estudyante ba natin may access to internet, meron ba ba silang mga laptops or computers sa bahay? So these are the things, no, mga factors na kailangan natin i-consider. So marami pa yung mga factors, na, but I only mentioned two most important. Alright? So doon sa ating, we are very lucky that FE 101 has provided, uh, provided us with a uh, teacher's manual. No? At saka meron tayong uh, manual for the students. So during the face-to-face, uh, doon sa ating manual, ito yung mga suggested teaching approaches or mga strategies or methods na, point, na ginagamit natin during the 
face-to-face uh, classes. So, uh, una ay yung tinatawag nating visualization strategy. So, andyan yung ating mga interactive whiteboard to display photos, yung mga ating audio clips, we let them watch video clips, and then we have this guided question after para gumawa sila ng reflective essays, kung ano yung na-feel nila doon sa kanilang pinanood. And then sometimes we let we let our students get out of the class, kung tayo sa ilalim ng punong kahoy, sa mga parks, wherever in the campus, and we ask them like the painting activities or drawings. And then we also have local field trips. Dito sa amin sa MSUL na, may malalapit kami mga areas dito, then I let them go, no? Minsan pumupunta kami outside the class, so pumunta kami sa tabing ilog, doon kami nagsusulat-sulat, or kayo dun sa mga, we have a lot of big trees in the campus, so doon kami nagkaklase before. And then we also have number two, yung tinatawag nating cooperative learning strategies. Ito yung mga small group sharing natin, o di kayo whole class activities, and then sometimes yung mga drama, mga comical scenes. So ito yung mga, uh, should I say, usual na ginagawa natin. Ang ginagawa ko in my class during the face-to-face -face, no, setup. Tapos, we are not ready sa nangyari. No? Ang mundo ay biglang nagsara. And the COVID-19 arrived in sometimes in March of 2020. So ang mga eskwelahan natin, temporary closed. And we are not ready. Lahat ay hindi ready sa mangyayaring ganito because we were trained for uh, FP 101 pero face-to-face. -face. Wala naman nag nagsabi na mag-training tayo for this. So lahat po tayo, I, I think everyone will agree. Ito yung mga tanong natin. Paano na to? No? Uh, kung saan naman eh? Ano man eh? Yung mga tipong ganun. Pa, paano ba ito natin ma-achieve yung mga strategies na wala na tayong personal interactions. So, dito na pumasok yung ang dami mga challenges na ating pagdadaanan. Dito pumapasok yung mga uh, innovativeness ng teacher, yung creativity natin, yung pagiging imaginative natin, lahat-lahat na no? uh, ginagamit natin. Uh, before the COVID-19, no, balikan muna natin, we face a lot of challenges. No? Uh, in MSUL, NAC, ito yung naging problema natin. And I think sa ibang campuses, ganun din ang naging problema when it comes to the number of students in the classes. No? Kasi we know that MFP 101 is designed for like 25 students per classroom. So ang nangyari, so mobra. May umabot ako one time ng nasa 40 ang aking estudyante. And I really asked the administration to split the the class kasi sobrang dami hindi mo matatapos ang isang topic for one hour like three hours a week so yun na solve natin yun problema din natin ang challenge natin during that time before the pandemic is yung availability of audio or visual equipment in the classroom kasi meron tayong mga sharing of video clips meron tayong mga audio clips so paano na ito no so luckily, siguro sa MSUL na kasi lahat ng classroom namin dito sa MSUL na meron na siyang television installed per classroom. So we have the whiteboard on the left, sa right side may chalkboard, sa gitna may television. So lahat po ng classroom. So mas madali na lang on part of the teachers kasi as, as long as may laptop ka, pwede nyo nang i-connect. And then, ang naging challenge din natin is yung manual mismo. No? Uh, I don't know if you can still remember when one of our gatherings sa Apple Tree uh, ang ginawa natin is uh, gusto natin i-revise yung manual kasi sa dami ng topics na nasa doon. Some are, we think na supplemental na lang, hindi na dapat gano'n. So I think this is the high time for na manguta na po ko. Kumusta na? Ano na bang update doon sa ating revision na uh, gagawin sa manual? Okay. So during the COVID-19, ito na ngayon yung ating mga challenges. This is, I'm talking about my personal challenges dito sa MHUL na. No? No, I believe uh, kayo din dyan sa ibang campuses would be uh, makakarelate. Number one is lack of personal interaction. No? Problema talaga natin. Uh, wala, papano na, ang question kasi natin is paano na yung tinatawag natin first-hand experience ng mga bata kasi we want them to have experience a long-lasting experience na pwede nilang balikan kasi we wanted them to become a peace builder after they finished their degree in the, in the university 
So parang nagiging question paano na ngayon ito, no? Meron tayong tinatawag na limited movement. So paano mo gagawin na mas epektibo ang mga strategies mo when everybody is obliged to stay home, no? Before because of the pandemic. Another challenge is the availability of gadgets, laptops, iPads, cell phones, smartphones kasi yun nga we shift to from face to face to virtual. So ang mga estudyante ba natin, may mga gadgets, may mga cellphones ba sila? So, these are the things. So, yun ang isa sa mga challenge natin. No? Uh, mahirap dito sa amin kasi most of the students ng MCL na are living far. Yung iba nasa mga medyo mabundok. Yung iba naman ay nasa mga lugar na wala talagang cellphone signal. So, internet pa kaya. So, ito yung mga talagang challenge natin namin dito. Fourth is the availability of strong connection. No? Yung iba wala. Yung iba naman paminsan lang. O yung iba pupunta pa sa poblasyon o pupunta sa ibang munisipyo just to have the connection. Then a stable electric supply. In some areas in the municipality of Picong Lano del Sur, which is very near in SND, problema din ang electric supply nila doon kasi most of the houses there are relying on the solar uh, energy. So uh, problema din sa mga sudyante, paano sila mag-online? Kasi nga mismo ilikwila do wala. And then the, another difficulty that we face here is the difficulty in the assessment. No, kasi nga wala tayong face-to-face, ang hirap ng assessment kasi when they submit their outputs, you, kahit sabihin mong at the end of the month, yung iba after a month. So doon pumapasok yung challenge talaga. At saka ang tanong doon, sila ba talaga ang gumagawa nung sinasubmit nila? How do we assure that these students are really learning? No? So, yun ang mga challenges na uh, somehow until now, uh, until now, we are still on the process of solving these uh, challenges. So, I would like to share to you that MSU well, na conducted a survey last March 2020 among college students. So, tinignan namin kung paano na tayo mag-virtual. So, chinek natin ang mga estudyante at ito ang naging resulta, no? statistical uh, result. 6.23% ng aming mga estudyante sa college have owned internet connection at home. Very good. That's positive. Pero 6.23 lang. Ang 93.77% ng aming mga estudyante sa college have no internet connection or a stable connection at home. So ibig sabihin, that means additional expenses for them kasi kailangan mag-load uh, para magkaroon ng connection. So di ba? And we have to admit na most of our students are really below poverty line yung income ng mga parents. Kaya nga nandito sa LNAC sila singa, for free education. So mahirap. And the campus cannot provide them with an internet connection. Even the teachers, nahisirapan din tayo. That's also a problem kasi nga, uh, ewan ko sa iba, pero sa amin kasi wala rin kami internet alawan. So talagang si teacher, you really have to spend for your own pocket as well. Because kayon nga, gusto nating magturo. Gusto nating magkaroon ng ating mga estudyante ng mas uh, uh, lasting experience with this education. And ito yung masakit kasi 4.61% ng mga estudyante namin ay wala talagang cellphones. So I have these three students na wala talagang cellphone kaya nahukuli sila lagi. Ang ginagawa nila ay nanghihiram sa kapitbahay or sa friends para lang makalag in at makita kung ano yung mga Uh, activities na gusto kong ipagawa sa kanila. So, anyway, uh, ano lang yan uh, for information sa MSU Alnax. So, ito na ngayon, during the pandemic, ito yung nakita namin pinaka-effectibong pamamaraan to communicate with them is through Facebook. Or, so, we created group chats. Mahirap sa amin to go with, uh, to use Zoom, to use Google Meet or Google, uh, Google Classroom kasi nga, uh, it's Nung mag-pandemia, I tried it once, pero masusurprise ka kasi isa, dalawa, tatlo lang kayo doon sa uh, sa online classes. So talagang pinigil ko kasi sabi ko it's a waste of time, sabi ko waste of uh, money, you know, to be honest. So Facebook ang nakita namin epektibo. So through group chats, doon ako nag upload ng mga activities with guide questions for them. Doon ako nagpo-post ng topic in a PowerPoint presentation yung mga uh, nilalaman ng ating FTE 101. And then I post or I upload FTE manual per topic. 
we have the manual pero mahaba yun that's too large file so what i normally do is uh, tingi tingi ang aking pagsisend sa kanila sa uh, sa group chats and then i check attendance through the uh, the group chat so paano ko chine check yung attendance ng mga bata like for instance i uploaded a photo tapos magla-like sila doon or mag-heart and then take ko yun makikita ko sino ang nakakita ng aking na, na i-upload kasi uh, ang hirap din na i put a deadline uh, when i put a deadline kasi marami mga bata na nakakapag online sila two weeks after o yung iba talaga isang buwan pa bago maka maka-upload. So, ibig sabihin, nag-lapse na yung time nung submission, sila kaka-check pa lang nila nung anong gagawin. So, you really have to uh, adjust na naman. So, with the group chats, yun ang naging pamamaraan ko. And then, with the group chat also, they submit their outputs. Like, for example, I ask them to do a reflective essay on this one. So, susulat sila. Then, they took a photo of the the materials, ipopost nila doon, i-upload nila doon sa FB chat. Pero, hinihingi ko pa rin yung hard copy. Hindi po pwedeng uh, electronic copies lang. And the group chat also serve as our communication uh, uh, platform ng mga bata. So, doon kami nag-query sila. So, kung nag-discuss, sinasagot ko. So, at least kahit pa paano, yung isang estudyante, hindi man maka-online this week, next week maka-online, makikita pa rin yung discussion na nandoon sa FB chat. Now, problem is yung nasa remote areas, yung walang kuryente, walang phone signal. So, ito talaga yung ano, kasi ma masyak ka na lang na isang sudyante mo, hindi talaga nagsasubmit after a month. So, uh, last last semester, I had these students from Malade, Glano del Sur in Municipality of Picong. Ang ginawa ko, uh, nag kinulekta ko lahat ng mga activities na nire-require ko sa mga estudyante, including the FP manual uh, na pinrint out ko. Uh, um, there was one time pumunta kaming malabang. So, on our way, ang ginawa ko, dinala ko yung mga papers and then I asked a cousin, may kamag-anak ako sa maladeg, sabi ko, pinagtanong ko, kilala niyo ba itong babae nito? And then they knew na taga doon lang sa area, so iniwan ko na lang yung papel. Sabi ko, uh, iniwan ko ito sa kasayo, tapos pakibigay sa kanya para maka uh, submit siya ng mga requirements para, para hindi siya ma-left behind. So, talagang extra effort si teacher. Okay? And then, yun ang sabi ko, ang ginawa din namin sa MSU ILNA, we assigned drop boxes for the students to submit their weekly uh, outputs. No? So, meron tayong mga numbers, pinos. Sinarpuli namin ito at nilagay namin ito sa different municipalities para guided ang may mga estudyante away from SND. And then, we assigned the uh, stations, we assigned a faculty or a staff doon sa mga areas as far as Lano del Sur, like yung sa Marugong, like sa Mal Malabang. And then every Monday, kung nakulik yun ang mga assigned faculty or assigned staff, binigyanadala sa MSU campus. And then pagdating sa campus, sinisegregate na naman natin yun. So yun po ang naging pamamaraan namin kasi ang hirap po maging online all the time. Kasi yung mga estudyante wala masyadong kakayahan. So, talagang extra challenge ang nangyayari sa MSUL na when it comes to this. So, uh, uh, sa mga subjects ko, this is what I normally do during the pandemic. I give, I give them individual activities like general writing, poems, song lyrics, reflective essays, for example. And then, pinapadraw ko pa rin sila yung ginagawa namin during the face-to-face, -face, pinapagawa ko pa rin sa kanila. So, like for example, we have a sample there na isang gawa ng estudyante ko. Uh, defining piece so nagdrawing sila uh, picture niya sinin sa group chat pero sinabmit pa rin through the drop boxes so ma-verify mo kung talagang siya ba ang gumagawa o pinapagawa sa iba and then like that no and it, it is a drawing of a student painting doon sa illustration but at the back of that illustration board is the explanation so may sulat pa rin sila so para talaga ma-internalize nila, ma-realize nila, ma-feel nila yung kanilang mga ginagawa. And then ito, I also give them a pair or small group activities even they living far, no? So may mga gift giving tayong ginagawa. For example, uh, in-emphasize ko yung charity begins at home. So sabi ko, 
uh, tulungan niyo yung mga parents niyo like for example yung sa harmony with uh, the nature sabi ko mag gardening kayo hindi kailangan lumabas ng bahay pwede within the within the house lang and then yung gift giving pwedeng ipagluto ang mga kapatid mo ipagluto yung parents mo and then i ask them to write down ano yung feeling may mga guide question ako binibigay with the students and then um uh, Ito naman din community outreach or gift giving that I asked my students is yung nasa isang area lang, pwede silang mag, uh, mag-meet, no? mag-create sila ng kanilang sariling grupo. And then I asked them to identify the poorest of the poor family and then bigyan nila ng something, no? sharing during the pandemic para ma-experience nila yung uh, how does it feel giving to uh, your fellow uh in the community so yung mga ganun ba na so example ng picture no na pinapakita natin ay sa municipality of Lala yan no so we have this the number of students Lala is second municipality from SMD so sila na nagmeet and then of course i always remind them of the health protocols na o oh, importante yung ganun and pero the good thing is i did not ask them to buy something sabi ko yung mga used clothes o yung mga sobra ang ibibigay natin para hindi naman din sila mahirapan when it comes to finance kasi baka ako magreklamo din naman sila na pandemya na nga pinapagastos pa sila okay so those are the things that we do and then with the conflict at saka yung conflict resolution i ask my students na umpisahan sa bahay halimbawa may mga kapatid silang nag-aaway umagit na ka then you apply what we've been uh, discussing yung mga topics natin on conflict resolution. So sabi ko hindi kailangan lumabas ng bahay sa bahay mismo. Ando na lahat, no? Kumbaga ang bahay is a package. So pwedeng doon na tayo umikot sa bahay nila para hindi na sila masyado mahirapan. All right. So I hope uh, may natutunan kayo sa mga strategies na mga ginagawa namin so far ako for the FP101. So I'd like to end this topic, this uh, talk, with by sharing this, that there is no boring subject, only boring teachers. So no, it's a challenge for us. So being an effective teacher is really a challenge because every student is unique. So kailangan natin maging mas, uh, mas imaginative, mas maging innovative, no? Ayaw natin maging boring. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much, everyone, and stay safe and stay healthy. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. Maraming salamat for that uh, sharing, Sir Bong. So uh, indeed, there's no boring teacher if the teacher has this uh, no <laughs> mind and creativity to make sure that everything will uh, be um, enjoy during the real learning process, especially that right now that uh, our speakers mentioned about the challenges that uh, uh, every one of us is experiencing during the pandemic, our migration from face-to-face the, to, the, to the online distance learning or to the remote teaching that uh, our uh, colleagues are actually doing right now in order to continue the, the education this time of uh, crisis. So uh, let's uh, give virtual clap to Sir Bong for that very wonderful presentation. So um, um, virtual audience, we know now some of uh, the, the experiences of our FPE educators and uh, how did they... Um, um, communicate to their students uh, the, the learning contents of the fundamentals of peace education. So may I, I now call on uh, Sir Bong, uh, uh, Ma'am Johara, and of course Ma'am Lovely for um, our interesting conversation this morning and like to encourage also our uh, virtual audience to also um, ask questions uh, later on. But uh, of course, I'm interested to um, know more and I'd like to um, start by asking uh, the question, uh, well, um, as a fundamental of peace education uh, educator, how is it different to teach in the face-to-face and of course in the remote teaching or distance t- uh, learning that uh, we have right now during the pandemic? So how, how do you feel about it that uh, you migrated from face-to-face to the, to the online distance learning or remote teaching? 
Any any one of you can answer that question. Sir Bong, would you like to start? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think there's a, a different challenge in your campus because of the <laughs> internet connectivity. Yes. And that I like the sharing that uh, you also integrated that volunteerism in your uh, curriculum in the, uh, in the delivery of instruction during the pandemic. So how do you feel about migrating from face-to-face to, -face to uh, online distance learning or remote teaching? Very difficult. If yun ang pwede kong uh, ma-describe, no? very difficult and very challenging. Kasi we're used to, yun nga, sabi ko, we're not prepared at all with the, with the shift to what we are doing right now from the face-to-face -face that normally we do. No? So talagang, like for example, before the pan, uh, during the pandemic, all teachers were sent for trainings on on Google uh, Google Class, tinuruan kami for the Zoom. Ang problema ngayon, we cannot uh, implement this. We cannot do this with our students or classroom. Yun nga, with, because of our problem in the campus with our students. So we really have to do personal uh, discarte. That's what we are doing right now. Even the other faculty, kanya-kanyang discarte na ngayon paano natin ma-deliver, paano naman ma-deliver yung mga topics in every subject. Not only for FP 101, but sa lahat po ng subjects namin dito, talagang um, sometimes, sinabi nga ng ibang teacher, yung madugo ang aming mga pinagdadaanan sa FPC well, when it comes to internet at saka sa virtual na ginagawa right. ngayon. Pero surviving naman. Surviving. Yeah. Sa MSU 1 ako, survivor ako. <laughs> right? I, I think, ma'am, lovely you were mentioning about that challenges a while ago uh like what challenges were you referring to are these challenges during the face-to-face -face or also during the migration to the distance learning or remote teaching that we have uh, i think um what sir bong bong was uh saying about uh no internet connection or low internet connection is a normal problem in entire Philippines, maybe, or especially in Mindanao. But um, the thing is, as an educator, we have to adapt. And I believe one of the things that we do is that do it asynchronously. You know, I believe that um, asynchronous is the most important, um, I think the most effective way in doing it, uh, especially in a very challenging internet connection in the country. However, what I'd like to share is during my, in my Google stream, I call my students peace builders. Like I'm very conversational in the stream, like, hey, peace builders, how are you? But that's all written. Uh, I hope that you are fine. So if you are not doing things, etc., etc. So I try to be as conversational as possible in the stream, just like, you know, posting something on Facebook with, to your friends or anything. So I do that in my Google um For you, I hope stream. that you are all okay. And then uh, just... uh, for me, um, I think one thing that only uh, stopped was the groupings because um, I already we already did the research. So we already have an idea what are the peace constructs and we just translated it to virtual but the groupings are no longer there so the approach is very individualistic like when they send drawings i after that i message them personally and ask them what did you feel after drawing so some of them would really say that i felt at ease you know um sometimes they even share that they already have online fatigue but after drawing it on paper um looking into their uh, drawings on the paper, using all their crayons or even just a piece of pencil, they said that they felt relieved, you know? So yeah. um, I think just that. So I, I think, I think you, you, yeah. you are saying that uh, right now, upon migrating to the online distance learning, it's more individual, um, different to that uh, what we were doing before that uh, we had a lot of group activities in our uh, traditional classroom setup but right now we kind of having a difficulty to come up with uh, different uh, cooperative learning activities but I think Mam Ma Juhara was mentioning about cooperative learning activities a while ago. Mam Ma Juhara would you like to uh, add more to what we are talking about? 
Yes, Sir Jupar. Uh, I, I like yung last slide ni Sir Bong. There are no boring teachers. I mean, there are no, uh, there's no boring subject, only boring teachers. Iyan ba yun? Okay, so uh, I agree with what uh, Sir Bong Bong and Ma'am Love has se have, uh, have said. Uh, but uh, on my case, uh, talagang at the beginning of the uh, semester, I always inculcate my students yung uh, positivity to look at the positive side in everything na wag yung maging self pity palagi just looking at the negative side bakit kasi may pandemic bakit kasi nangyayari ito bakit may siege so i always tell them alhamdulillah at least we have an alternative an option okay ano kaya kung nagstop na lang nagstop ang education so at least we have this Google Classroom, we have this uh, Facebook, we have uh, social media uh, sites na pwede natin gamitin. So why don't we embrace all of this? It's not only us, it's not only we that uh, have been experiencing this. It's worldwide. So uh, gamitin na lang natin, i-enjoy na lang natin. So yun palagi, although at the back of my mind, uh, pati ako na medyo nawawala ng pag-asa, pero we have to be positive as peace educators. We have to be flexible. Mm -mm. So ang... Parang nag -e echo so ang yeah, nangyari, okay sir, ang nangyari is uh, uh, ako nakikita ko dito my positive talaga because the creative teachers become more and more and more creative and resourceful. May mga ginagawa tayo ngayon na hindi nagagawa ng face to face. There are activities that are more suitable to our students that can be done now, okay? Uh, that were not done before. Uh, like for example, yung webinars. Before, not everyone can attend trainings, mga seminars that are held in Manila or even international. And look at us now. Nakikita natin si Stephen Krashen na doon lang natin nababasa sa books. Kita natin si Newland David, for example. Yung mga na, nakikita lang natin noon, but th this can already be reachable now because of this one. And the program done in Jensen, MSU Jensen by Sir Mayong and Sir Pakat, nakikita namin dito, shared with our students. Yung mga post ni Sir Bongbong, Ma'am Love from Naawan and SND, nakikita ng students ko. Th those things were not done before. Okay, so yun ang medyo nakita ko ngayon. So sabi ko, uh, let's embrace this. There is always an end to everything. And next na mawala na pandemic, mamimiss natin. Mamimiss natin ang mga to. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so you were saying that as a peace educator, especially that we are in emergency situation, it's always important that at the beginning of the semester, we have to maintain the sanity of everyone in our class. Because uh, I think learning could not happen if we are not that uh, we have not we are we do not have our peace of mind and uh, we're not peaceful because of the uh, 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 uncertainty uncertainties that we have because of, of the complexities and I think you also mentioned about um, migrating into the online distance learning is also expanding opportunities for our students because they do not only learn what we are giving to them in the classroom but they also learn from others especially that uh, we uh, we can access uh, different information from from different sources from different experts all right so ano lang uh, because this has been our uh, one of the challenges that uh, we are actually encountering as fpe 101 educators because in our FPE 101, there is, um, there's a module that has an emphasis on religion. And I think Ma'am Johara already mentioned about their strategy that uh, they move from, uh, from that uh, organizing a seminar or a lecture series in face-to-face -face into a webinar uh, lecture series on, that, uh, on the religion. So um, what about... Uh, Kila Sir Bongbong and Mam Lovely, how are you uh, introducing the module to to your students? 
Uh, in our classroom, we are not that mixed. Most of my um, students are Christians. I probably have one to three as the um, most number of Muslim students. However, what I do in module two is I let my students, I group my students before, I group my students into five and assign them tasks. Like, for example, if you are assigned the Christian or Christianity, you dress, how do Christians attend masses? And then you also give us a sample prayer from uh, Christianity or Catholicism. And then you also provide us um, quotes that attribute to peace and explain it. And then the same with Islam, the same with uh, Hinduism and Buddhism and Taoism and all that. At the end of the at the end of the activity, I would always emphasize that the emphasis of the teacher is also very important. That no matter what your religion is, you only need to be a better person, an individual who promotes peace. And no religion really promotes violence. Um, one of the things that I would always address is the concept of jihad. You know, there is no such thing as um, what, what, what this um, uh, holy war, holy war, holy war. Yes, there is no such thing as a uh, holy war. But then the jihad concept has to be changed. You know, there's jihad, it is a sacrifice, but not what media is trying to tell us. So that is the emphasis. And fact is Muslim. In this region, there are no like uh, minority Muslims uh, have a, my, a minor in population. So we, I always tell them that, you know, I am from Iligan. I have a lot of Muslim friends, and we don't really, I don't really see them as violent people. You know, I love them, I like them, I converse with them. So I do a lot of stuff with them as if like they're they're just human, you know, it's the same with us. So the same concept, because there is Islamophobia really. So we I always emphasize that. That is uh, that is also my way of um defending my Muslim friends. You know, that is also my way of loving my Muslim friends and even all the peace educators in the MSU system. So emphasis of the teacher is very important. They enjoy the activity. They knew something about the activity, but the emphasis of the teacher is also very important. This uh, yeah. I translated it online. Well, again, I put that in the uh, so that all students can. Uh, do it. Yes, cultural pluralism according to Sir Renabella Badisos. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sir Bong, would you like to add? Oh, yes. Sir Bong? Yes, well, hello. Hello. Oh. Okay. So, in our case naman dito, uh, what I normally usually do with the teachers, uh, with the manual, is that uh, yung nga natabi ko kanina, what I normally do is tingi-tingi kong binibigay sa mga estudyante yung teachers, uh, yung manual. And some of the topics there ay ginagawa kong PowerPoint presentation para mas madali nilang maintindihan kasi pagkahaba-haba naman din talaga nung ating uh, manual. We have to admit that. Now, uh, with regards to sa module 2, wala masyadong problema kasi most of my students are actually uh, maranaw. Ang talagang may malaking problema ako if it's sa module 4 dun sa topics on uh, conflicts and resolution. So, uh, conflicts, no? So, ang kinawa ko, yun nga ang nasabi ko kanina that I, uh, dun sa mga activities na ginagawa ko with module 4, I started uh, asking them to to resolve uh, issues, conflicts, within the family, yung sa mga kapatid nila, uh, they, they try to resolve their issues ng mga kapatid mo kung nag-aaway sila, paano mo din uh, applying yung mga uh, nasa modules natin, yung nasa manual. So, yun Sige, I, I think I cannot sleep if I will not be able to ask this question to Ma'am Jo and probably <laughs> a Sir Bong Bong because um, I'd like to know, I'm interested about 
ano kaya yung naging impact ng ano yung like teaching of the module 2 or FPE 101 doon sa sa prevention and transformation ng violent extremism after the Marawi siege uh, is there something that you observe about how did it help in our uh, in our effort to prevent and transform violent extremism in in our respective communities Thank you, Sir Jovar. Uh, before I answer that, I'd like to invite Sir Bong and Sir Lovely and all the peace educators here from the different MSU campuses to to uh, utilize the video that uh, videos that have been posted in the FPE 101 MSU system. So, pwede nyo yun ibigay sa mga students nyo because it's in Facebook. Kasi live, when we... Uh, let our students watch that one live siya. So, na safe siya doon. So, anytime, you can actually uh, let your students watch that. Pwede pang ikwan yung um, link and then ilagay sa Google Classroom or sa Classwork. Okay. That can be a great help. And uh, to tell you, we, already, uh, we only did that yung live na webinar during the first semester last sem because this sem we need not invite the same speakers nandiyan na yan meron na so supplement lang so i gave uh, uh, my students in the classwork yung link and then binigay ko ng timeline they have to watch and there is that evaluation okay so madali lang and then supplement lang tayo it's on the summary Na nilagay ko sa matrix, what are the similarities? And we found out that every religion promotes peace. And that's very important. So, and regarding, uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so Keep regarding going. your question, uh, that's, uh, that's really a good question. Kasi pang six semesters na tayo, no? So at least medyo na track natin sa beginning medyo uh, crucial siya because uh, 2018 fresh pa yung Marawi siege. Kaya yung mga videos na ginagamit natin, ginagamit ko sa klase, there were times na ako na uuna umiyak because I ha I was a victim of the Marawi siege. Na doon sa Ground Zero yung bahay namin and not a single piece was retrieved when we were uh, when we were allowed to go there so ang masabi ko din na yung itong peace education being part of this peace education has helped me a lot kasi there were no debriefings for us pero yung mga training sa peace ed doon ko nalalabas yung mga uh, sentiments and so on so anong impact yung nasabi ni ma'am lovely about jihad Jihad, yung misconception not only of our non renowned students, non-Muslim students, but even yung Muslim students. There is that misconception of jihad the, as associated with holy war. Kasi yun ang pinakauso noon. So because of our discussion, thorough discussion, a sharing of our lecturers, iba-iba sila, I have to recognize Professor Makarambon, Professor uh, Abdurrahman, okay? So, yung mga uh, faculty members sa King Faisal Center, lahat sila abled, lahat sila competent in teaching uh, yung module to na peace uh, concepts in Islam. So because of that, nawawala yung mga negative perceptions, stereotyping, discriminations. Those are the causes, uh, causes of conflicts. Na medyo na... Uh, gradually na erase yun, okay, sa mga minds ng mga students natin, especially for freshmen na bago lang sa Marawi. So sabi nila, ma'am, akala namin grabe yung, pa, uh, yung, yung jihad. So sabi ko, the fact that you come here from Tawi-Tawi, from Sulu, from Coronadal City, to seek education, you're already struggling, you're already sacrificing, you're already doing jihad. So you need not bring weapons para mag uh, fight for the sake of God. Hindi. Ni you need not do that one. Yung mga sacrifices mo, nawalay ka sa mga parents mo, just to, to be educated. Okay. 
be a good Christian, be a good Muslim, okay, be a good lumad, you're already struggling. So, yung mga ganon, for them to reflect and of course probably discuss about their insights and uh, of course process whatever uh, we are discussing or what was discussed from the way. Recording in progress. This MHQL were not actually that kind of students in Mom Johara sa Marawi that they really experienced the, the seeds. And most dito naman din, uh, experience nila is mga uh, family feud or mga read or conflict within the community. So yun yung, ma yung, yung parang uh, isa sa mga kailangan pagtuunan ng pansin. So what I normally do with the, my students is uh, pinofocus ko sila doon sa example kasi may dalawang class in jihad, di ba na usapan natin yon yung jihad uh, within yourself no yes. so doon ko pinofocus yung mga bata so yun ang inaattack ko para mas maintindihan nila na in order for us to uh, become peaceful you have to start from within yun yung topic natin ng first uh, webinar natin so so right. far naman din with my students uh, i see positive impact with them uh, yung mga mga na nakakasalamuha kong estudyante uh, ang tawag dito uh, like like I live in a boarding house now uh, then yung mga katabi ko mga rooms were actually my were my former students sa FP101 and sometimes naririnig ko sila nag-uusap na sabi na meron silang mga konting problema kung mga siguro mga away-away tapos uh, naririnig ko one of them we're talking about yung mga conflict like resolution na uh, YouTube speech kasi yung turo ng FP101 nakakataba ng puso kasi at least they are applying it no sa maliliit na mga mga issues within their friends so i see positive uh, impact to our students now i understand sir bong that you have uh, you had a difficulty with uh, with the peaceful uh, or approaches to conflict resolution because of the existence of rido which is kind yeah. of sensitive right oh i think uh, there is something that we need to uh, discuss more about how do we deal with uh, resolutions particularly with the with the clan conflict because uh, exactly. we know for a fact that historically the arm the sporadic armed conflict in Mindanao or one of the reasons why there are sporadic armed conflicts in Mindanao is that of the existence of uh, clan conflict or redo in our uh, communities and that is not only true in your community but that's also true in Maguindanao area or in the the, the former Cotabato uh, province na napakalaki that like like in our area. So I think our audience uh, or the virtual audience um our participants are very excited also to converse with us. I think they have some concerns and there are they have some re reflections and insights and most probably clarifications about your presentations. I hope you guys or you peace educators are ready to converse with them and excited to converse with them. Parang nag-uusap lang tayo, di ba? <laughs> Alright, so let me call <laughs> on uh, Sir John. Uh -oh. yes, Sir John, everyone. parang mag-YouTube channel na tayong apat eh. Oh, oh. Hi guys, <laughs> welcome back to my channel. <laughs> Hindi, but this session is really nice no? because nare-reinforce yung mga previous nyo na mga dinis na din and yes. naka-clarify yung mga dapat i-clarify. And Definitely commendable lahat ng mga ginagawa ng strategies. And I think one participant actually agree on that. Uh, uh, on that. Are you still there? This is probably the problem when we have this uh, virtual conversation. <laughs> Off video na lang. <laughs> Jan or... Hello? All right. Ayan. All right, we can hear you, John. 
sana ko last na rinig. <laughs> Or na never na rinig. Uh, okay. Na lang, so that there will be no Sige. communication gap. <laughs> True that. No, I was saying that this uh, space is actually good na nare-reinforce yung mga previous na diniscuss nyo at nakaklarify yung mga dapat na clarify And as I said, totally and definitely commendable yung mga efforts na ginawa nyo at ginagawa nyo sa classroom. And actually with that, isang participant natin ang nag-agree. Sabi na nga, nga oh, isang participant, high salute sa mga effort ng MSU faculty ng MSU. We feel you, Sir Bong, even as here in lower part of, lower part of the Philippines, in Basilan, we feel the difficulties even Uh, in online or even in more modular learning delivery class. The parents are even saying that we feel that we want the face-to-face class again. Ayun. Sabi niya, eto na ba yung bagong normal? O oh, ma'am Noor, eto na yata yung bagong normal. <laughs> And also, ag- uh, nag-agree siya dun sa parang positivity message ni Ma'am Johara. And actually, just to, uh, to start our first que- uh, question, no? Um, eto yung parang introduction niyo from MSU IIT sabi ng isang participant natin thank you to our speakers to Ma'am Johara Labi and Sir Bongbong our experiences in teaching during the pandemic are really similar this is really a struggle not only to faculty but most to students i commend all of your strategies with mostly 100% success rate during this difficult time so eto na yung question how do we as teachers handle or handle or an effective strategy handling. to a uh, handling or an effective strategy to tidy lazy and students who attended meetings yet fail to participate in class despite calling them in class many times or students treating the subject as a compliance only so anyone so can how- answer paano daw ayo yung mga estudyante na parang I guess hindi masyado participative and not really into class, lazy and tardy na parang pang-compliance lang yung subject nito. Maybe Ma'am Lovely can start? Ah, okay. So ako talaga dyan, ha? Anyway, yes. um, hi. Na- hi. ka. <laughs> Go. Sige pa. Na, nag-freeze na si Ma'am Tulay. Nag- Ma'am, nag-freeze ka. Sige, Sir Bong, why don't you go ahead and then Ma'am Lovely can... Uh, can follow after. Ma'am, lovely si Sir Bong na lang po. Sir Bong, go ahead. Okay, sige po. So, uh, yung question is na very true to all, no? Siguro we have this kind of students. Sabi ko nga kanina, students are unique. So, to become, to be an effective teacher, it's a challenge kasi ka, iba-iba sila ng pag-ungal. Yung mga, yung mga lazy. So, dito pumapasok yung strategies natin. Paano natin mag-gagawing uh, lively, hindi boring ang FP 101 with them. Kasi ang pinanggagalingan minsan ng laziness ng estudyante, minsan based on my experience is mismo yung subject na parang si teacher, wala lang. Minsan lang din sisipo. Tapos, oh, ito gawin nyo ito. Tapos, yun. Pati, uh, ano yun eh, parang kung ano yung nakikita ni students sa aura ni teacher, kung medyo lazy naman din si teacher, naging lazy din ng bata. So, uh, with This time, no, uh, masaya ako kasi so far naman din lahat ng estudyante ko are very participative. Uh, lahat naman din sila so far nagsasubmit. Wala pa naman ako masyadong encounter with that student na kailangan mo pang tawagan to submit. What I experience with them is they're asking mostly on extend, extending the deadline. <laughs> kasi nga, hindi nila uh, late na nila nakita yung activity. So, of course kailangan din nating wag maging masyadong strict in this time of pandemic. So we ha- really have to understand also the, the, the students. Baka may pinanggagalingan yung kanilang ano. Uh, ang nangyari sa akin ngayon, uh, I would say that uh, we're not only becoming a teacher but we also becoming a guidance counselor ng mga bata. Sometimes uh, may counseling na nangyari with them para mas maintindihan nila. Uh, sa ginagawa ko, I give my personal number to my students kasi there are times that they wa- really wanted to talk to someone. So, yun nga. Hindi eh, natin sila kinakausap. So, depende Sige. na din yun sa ating mga strategies po. 
Right. So, back to you, teacher, right? It depends on the strategies ni teacher. And I like yung sinabi mo na parang you had to wear another hat that being a, uh, being a counselor and that you really have to understand yung, yung students kung saan ang pinagagalingan ng estudyante also. Um, Ma'am Jo and Ma'am Dav, would you uh, like to add uh, sa sinabi ni Sir Bong? Bong? Uh, yes, John. <coughs> Sige po. Yung, thank you, ma'am, yung from IIT, MSU IIT. The feeling is mutual. Talagang uh, may mga students tayo na ganyan. But uh, on my part, uh, at the beginning of the semester, I mentioned a while ago about the survey questionnaire that I gave to all my uh, courses handled. And then uh, after that, there is also that... Uh, orientation uh, slides okay so sa in the orientation uh, i can actually share my uh, slides ako for orientation and then there i gave them the uh, the the syllabus i presented the syllabus and then aside from that yung mga reminders okay uh, it's more on values values for me kasi uh, if uh, we will not be inculcating with our students yung importance of uh, this course, then ayaw nila. Parang they will not appreciate it. So sabi nila that's only a three-unit undergraduate course. But we'll, we'll let them realize that this is a unique course. Uh, this uh, uh, this is one of the most important courses that you will be taking in your college journey. Uh-huh. So nilagay ko doon regarding submission of grades, I said, late submission is allowed. However, the points that you'll get will never be the same with the points that will be obtained by students who submitted on time. So we have to be flexible. Iba noon na face-to-face pag June 24, submission, tw- June 24 na. Ngayon, sinabi na June 24, magiging August 5 pa. Uh, because of uh, a lot of uh, mga challenges na pini-face nila, like your internet connection and problems and that and this. So, uh, they may be lying or not, that we do not know. Sabi ko, I may, be not, I may not be watching you, but God is there watching you. So whatever your reasons, pahala na si Batman. <laughs> so yun. So until uh, the end of the quant- yun submission pa rin, nilalagay. I mean, uh, accepted, but different points. Yung tardiness, my Google Forms kami for attendance during synchronous classes. Sabi ko, this can be seen. The time when you enter the room, nakikita. So uh, at the end of the semester, pwede ko yung i-share sa inyo. Ano yung, uh, uh, I mean, summary of this one. So everybody's motivated. And finally, yung sabi ni Sir Bong, nakakahawa yung enthusiasm ng teacher. Yung uh, creativity niya. So if you introduce varied mga um, interesting activities, aabangan nila yan next. I should be in our FPE 101 class because I'm excited. Ano na naman ng next activities na ibibigay ni ma'am? Uh, will we be able to uh, share again? Uh, and I remember one time, I was not expecting, nag-share yung bata dito, Google Classroom, Google Meet, umiiyak siya. I did not expect that because uh, uh, akala ko uh, hin- hindi 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 yon makakreate yung simple question ng ganun na emotion but my students including myself umiyak so nakaka touch pag ganun na activity and that is possible pala even if it's not face to face so ganun po yung experience ko mm. Thank 
Thank you, ma'am, John. No? At the start, sinabi mo na parang sa orientation pa lang talagang sinasabi mo na sa mga sudyante, nakalagay na sa syllabus, kundi mga deliverables, ano yung mga consequences kapag hindi nila, for example, na submit on time. Um, but I really like yung na-mention na, na mo din na parang it's important na sa start pa lang ma-foster na yung appreciation ng subject dun sa mga sudyante. No? Um, but ma'am Labi, would you like to add to that or would you like to um, go with to the next question? Kayo pa. Ah, okay, so I'd like just like to add na mm. this is really about if we are going to teach peace, we really have to walk our talk. And what is important is uh, if we want to promote peace, we also need to support the uh, peace, uh, mental peace of our students. So sometimes there are really what we call very special students that you already posted, you already messaged, you already called. But then they are not yet there. They're still not there. They're not past. So that is where I put my authority. That is where my authority comes in as a teacher. So I give them like, for example, bong bong. You have not passed. I called you. I texted you. I, I do this and do that. But if you cannot still pass this one, I will be forced to drop you or to fail you for this activity. Um, we we can be as um, taller up. Uh, We can tolerate them as much as you want because, yes, this is the pandemic. But as teachers also, we need to put a gap between our students and tell them that, hey, not passing is already disrespectful to, you know, that is already not promoting peace, you know. <laughs> so I think we also need to consider that we are also teachers so we can also teach them discipline but not enforce you know we say so we really have they, they can consider that <laughs> right right your teachers at the end of the day you have to give your grades i think like agree dyan yung isang participant natin sa comment din, especially dun sa point ni ma'am johari ni ma'am lovely na yun din yung ginagawa niya na parang at the start of the semester i tell them i'm willing to accept late submissions but late submissions will incur one point deduction per day delayed o ganyan i think that's a fair rule for everyone i think that's also fair no um sige going to our next question this was chatted privately privately And I think this is for Ma'am Johara, but Ma'am Lovely and Sir Bongbong can answer, of course, kung ginagawa din nila to. But Ma'am Johara, the, uh, the question is, or the comment, please share how you rate your work of students on infographics. I am interested on the specific criteria that you are employing. Okay, thank you. Uh, creating infographic is not only... Uh, sa akin, it's not only in my FPE 101, but also in my other subjects. So I find that uh, very effective. So of course, I use rubrics. Uh, there are a lot of rubrics available online. Mm -mm. Nag, uh, kon ako na uh, rubrics for infographics, but I modify it depending on what I want my students to uh, focus on. On the design, Pinaliit ko yung score, okay? It's more on the relevance to the theme, okay? Ang nilagyan ko ng uh, malaking points kasi uh, on the design naman, okay? Iba-iba because uh, although I gave my students yung tutorial na uh, make graphics, uh, I gave them yung mga um, designs like uh, mga apps like Canva, publisher, pero there are students na gumawa ng uh, word, nilagay, parang collage, nilagay niya yung mga pictures, and then give screenshot niya, and that's already his infographic. So, uh, sabi ko, I, I did not uh, give a lot of comments on that kasi that's what's available. Canva is not available for him. Uh, sa cellphone lang siya or wala siyang uh, uh, publisher. Uh -uh. So yes, rubrics po ang ginagamit ko even in uh, other uh, call this, activities kasi mas madali ko siyang ma-check. Okay. Very subjective ang rating in activities like uh, takeaways, yung writing, 
okay yung uh, even the um, sharing okay but sometimes uh, medyo na I mean, nare-remind ko sarili ko because I am a language teacher and then diretsyo na makita ko, ilalagay ko sa comment na is or was, pero nai-erase ko. This is not a language class. Baka mabadrip ang mga bata next na they will no longer be sharing because the grammar is always the focus of the teacher. Yung mechanics, use of language. So, kasi minsan eh. Uh, Bael's students, Bachelor of Arts in Language Studies, pero taking FPE 101, na diretsyo na I have to comment their grammar, pero uh, tone down, tone down, ma'am Jo, tone down. This is a peace class. <laughs> Baka mapatrip sila. So kaya nga, Filipino language is allowed. So hmm. okay lang. So yun, mga yun, uh, rubrics can be a great help to us teachers. Uh, mm. Although hindi yung, di ba, there are two types of rubrics na yung uh, spelled out na yung holistic and analytical. So, ang akin lang is yung uh, just uh, the criteria with the corresponding points para mas madali. But for mm. adapted rubrics, nandiyan na yung mga details. Uh-uh. Mm. Alright. So, yun po. But that not to answer, you use rubrics that you can also find online, no? You can opo, find online, opo, opo. right? Kasi and walang the, time to make right. it. Ma'am, nakamute ka. <laughs> walang time. Walang time to make right. oh, our own agree. rubrics. Tama din. Uh-uh. But maganda yung point mo na parang the, yung major bearing ng points is actually more on the relevance to the theme at the heart mismo dun sa content and less on the technical, for example, grammar uh, side. And speaking of, you mentioned about Filipino. Pwede sila maggumamit ng Filipino. One question sent privately, nagtanong siya kung meron po ba tayong syllabus sa Filipino para sa FPE? As of this moment, wala po. Uh, hmm. It's in English version. English. Uh, yung akin, yung akin lang kasi I made a study about language preference. So yung gusto ng mga bata in learning peace education combination of uh, kasi bilingual so sabi nila we want english and filipino ma'am so sabi ko okay why not but i cannot speak for other peace education teachers uh, mm-hmm. baka uh, and then yung speaking the english language it does not mean that i mean filipino language it does not mean na pati yung sa i mean on my part when i teach of course i use the english language mm-hmm. but when my students respond express themselves, that's the time na uh, I allow them to speak in Filipino. Pero yung mm. teaching talaga, medium of instruction is uh, English. But there are times we can uh, code switch. Okay. Mm. Right. Pero uh, ang akin, we need not translate uh, the syllabus from English to uh, Filipino. Filipino. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Tama ba yung pagkakaintindi, pagkakaintindi ko na because at the heart of the, the FPE is also communication. It won't matter if it's English or Filipino or Maguindanao or whether ano yung language basta nagkakaintindihan. Tama ba yun, ma'am? And panel? Tama yeah. po, pero oh, oh, right. I don't Go. allow uh, Maguindanao. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> May mga terms lang. Ah, okay. Ano, because uh, that can't be understood by everyone. Ah, okay. So, so oo, oh, okay. oh, may mga times lang like yung mga uh, terms that cannot really be translated into uh, English or Filipino. So, okay. sinasabi na niya na, kasi uh, I remember yung pinaka-first na activity natin, namin, what is peace in your own language? Kalilintat, kalinaw, kapayapaan, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, that's actually our first the activity na sa uh, post sa kwan sa board and then ay yan pala ang peace sa Maguindanao yan pala ang peace sa Tauso okay. sa Maranao Sige. Ma'am Lovely may sasabihin ka sana um, In my class I would say a lang- you can use the language that will be that could be understand by that could be under uh, that could be understood by everyone but also those that you are a language that you are most comfortable with so in our case 
Latin Sam is Oriental, we can have English, um, Cebuano, and Filipino. Mm. All right. Sige, sige po. Um, all right. Actually, Sir Bong, you unmuted yourself. Would you like to add? Oh, wala naman. Pareho lang din. <laughs> <laughs> ano ba dyan sa inyo, sir? Sa LNAP, what's the, of course, English, and then Filipino, I guess, and then also si Bono? Um, ay, hindi. Uh, Tagalog ako. No? Tagalog. Hindi na sabi ako, okay. oh, mas maintindi yung Tagalog. Kasi even the for Maranao, mas madali niyo lang maintindihan yung Tagalog rather than Bisaya. Okay, there are, ah. especially the students coming from Lanao del Sur, they right. prefer Tagalog. Mm. Uh, sometimes they hardly understand Bisaya. So, talagang English-Tagalog na lang talaga ang ginagamit natin. Right. And I think same also in Maguindano. Um, yeah, because in Maguindano, in Maguindano also. So, I think that's also the case. Um, okay, last question. Uh, this one is from MSOIT, Miss Amabel. And I actually chatted yung Ma'am Amabel kung if you would like to open your video and ask your question, that would be nice also kung if you're comfortable and if malakas ang uh, signal mo. Ma'am Amabel? Sorry, Ma'am Bato. Sorry, nag a ako. Sana siya. If hindi naman, babasahin ko na lang. Um, so the question na nakalagay also on our group chat Uh, on our chat room is that um, thank you to all of you now again uh, the question is what can a teacher do if during the discussion or sharing a student reveals his her mother is a battered wife or experienced abuse now because now not all of us are trained in the briefing so that's the, that was the, that's the question Si Ma'am Jo, siguro pwedeng sumagot niyan. <laughs> Actually, yung, yung kishare ko kanina na nakaiyak kami, I was asking them yung concerns, uh, yung experiences nila this pandemic and one student uh, revealed that she's from uh, Malabang and then yung iba, yung iba problema lang niya and then she went to Marawi to 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 spend her uh, uh, my time here para malakas yung net and then sabi niya as i listen to my classmates ang problema lang nila connection pero ako uh, since this is not my home i have to work and at the same time i mean I do household chores and at the same time study so marami siyang problema na personal so umiyak talaga siya and ay eh, nakaiyak din ako so uh, cases like that na very personal okay uh, may ganun na estudyante and i always ask him or her na you want us to talk about that here nakikinig yung iba or you want me to talk with you personally kasi uh, uh, mabigat yan. We may not be guidance counselors, but we are mothers. We are sisters. We are teachers. And most importantly, we are peace educators. So kasama yun sa getrain sa atin during our training. So pag sabihin niya na okay lang, ma'am, then discarte. Discarte ng teacher. So I would uh, start uh, asking na uh, uh, ano pala yung kwan ng father mo? And then, uh, how about this and that? Is not your father God-fearing? Mga ganyan na, uh, we have to be very careful. Iba yung actual. I cannot express it here. Iba yung actual pag, kasi yung response ng students. So doon yung hugot niya, yun ang nire-respond mo. And dyan si Ma'am March, Marchi Fista, guidance counselor yan, uh, baka mag-share siya ng gano'n na uh, 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 responses, best responses. Right. Yep. Actually, um, yep, Ma'am March is here and she also chatted something on the uh, chat Max, sabi niya, battered wife, if one thinks he or she can't handle the problem, you may refer to the guidance counselor or, or tell her those with personal problems to PM or call, call you personally. That's right, because I also it takes some really specific skills and really a lot of ethical considerations when you deal with these kinds of situations. Um, right. Um, so, Sir Bong and Ma'am Lovely, would you I, I'd like to add something? 
Uh, well, I haven't Milan. experienced that yet. But yeah, yeah, I think I would like to agree with Ma Margie that this is where our um, role as a peace teacher uh, not really stops, but this is where we need help already. You know, um, the guidance counseling and the debriefing approach is also another thing. And we might ask questions that are, uh, I should say, dangerous. And then they they will answer that and we will supplement with another question that would only worsen what they are feeling. So on my part, uh, on my part I better call the guidance counselor. So this is where collaborations and friendships uh, come handy. So that would be all done. Yes, call a friend. Parang call a friend. <laughs> call a friend. Yes. Call a friend. Call a friend. Okay. Call a counselor. A refer, referral is the key. Sir Bong? Oh, I think this kind of a problem is very personal, very sensitive, no? And yes, we are not prepared for debriefing sa mga ganitong. Pero I think... Uh, yun, I agree with Ma Margie na it has some to, uh, dapat ang gawin is call, no? Personal call or kausapin na masinsin ng bata. Tapos pag hindi kaya, yun, call a friend no? uh, dun sa guidance counselor or someone who is knowledgeable on this matter, no? Mm-hmm. Pwede naman siguro din mga... Anyway, in the campus, marami tayong mga mother motherly people na pwedeng makapag... Uh, ang tawag ito, makausap yung bata in a peaceful way na yun, na ma-overcome niya yung ganung problema. Right, right. Sige, sige. Alright, thank you so much everyone. Si Mama Marja, actually may pahabol na comment. Sabi niya, yes po, I think we need to have a training too on basic counseling skill. More on facilitating okay. one's emotions, the appropriate responses in a counseling session. True. So this is noted, <laughs> Mama Marjorie. Yeah, this is actually important considering na may mga ganito pa lang uh, situations. And maybe kahit hindi uh, ganitong battered wife na situation, pero uh, some situations, similar situations could arise na kailangan ng counseling skills. Nyo. So with that, this actually ends our uh, Q&A portion. Thank you so much to our panel members, Sir Bong, Mom Joy and Mom Lovely. Grabe, ang dami namin natutunan for today. Um, talagang na-cover din talaga yung module. I think most of the highlights ng module ay na-cover. Um, and speaking of Mom Margie, hi Mom Margie, could you turn your video on? Because uh, for the next uh, session, we will have of Ma'am Margie to talk about understanding conflict, peace, and violence and Ma'am Rufa uh, Giam uh, to talk about conflict resolution and we are so excited for that. Uh, so again, thank you everyone. We would like to request pala yung participants natin to not forget uh, filling out our attendance and evaluation form. Uh, we sent the link sa ating group chat so please scroll up lang so you can uh, you can answer that and that's an evaluation form. Um, so, again, thank you so much. I, on behalf of the organizers of Sergio Bar, we're so happy. Grab yung successful yung session. Ito. Thank you so much. Um, and with that, actually, we have a uh, a certificate for you, yes. Uh, certificate of appreciation to our panel uh, members for such interesting and invaluable in session. So, um, we're going to flash the certificate Um so I can read the content. Uh, hi, Ma Margie. Ayan si Ma Margie. Um, so, sign na yung... Hello? Ayan. Ayan. So, I'm gonna read. So, Certificate of Appreciation is given to the panel member for sharing... Uh, her inv- a valuable time and expertise as a panelist on the topic Teaching Approaches and Pedagogies Webinar 2 of MCC 101 Virtual Teacher Training in uh, for MC System on July 24, 2021. This three-part webinar series will provide competency training for faculty members from the 11 MSU campuses to augment this educational research. Signed, Adeline C. Mala, uh, the graduate uh, manager, the graduate of the